Welcome to Greenville United Methodist Church on this All Saints Sunday. Just a few brief announcements this morning. Uh, the regional charge conference uh, is today, and that's at Madisonville uh, First United Methodist, and that's at three o'clock today. Uh, the uh, oh, it's five. Okay, correction in the bulletin. It's at five o'clock. Okay, at five o'clock, and. Uh, the first meeting uh, for the upcoming Children's Church uh, is tomorrow at 5.30. And also, if your children are interested in being in the Christmas play, they've begun rehearsal, and that's on uh, Wednesdays, uh, the entire month of November, and that's at 5.30. And uh, the community Thanksgiving service is Monday, November 19th at 6.30, and that's just been uh, announced. Uh, it's at First Assembly of God. Pastor Jones from uh, Central City Methodist Church will be the speaker. And also family members, uh, you may pick up uh, the mums at the end of the service today uh, for those uh, in memorial of your loved ones. The peace of God be with you. And also with you. We welcome each one of you this day as we worship our Lord and Savior in spirit and truth. And I'm glad that you are here in a very special way. One of the ways in which we begin worship is by centering ourselves. So at this moment in time, let's just take a moment to bow our heads, take a deep breath, and give thanks to God. We know that it is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. We've entered into this sanctuary, your house. So come now and let your spirit speak to us. And may we find comfort, hope, joy, and peace. For it's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Let us stand for our call to worship.
even when it seems unclear to me I believe you are You may be seated. And Jesus said clearly, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And this morning we can come acknowledging that we are here today and we can bask in his glory. It's also a day we can remind ourselves of those who've gone before us. Those are now among the great cloud of witnesses. So this day, as we take the opportunity, let us remember these following verses. Chris. We pause to remember Anna Taylor, Lois Bethel, Irvin Wright Gary, Miss Lola Cook, and Miss Edna McSpedden. Taking your insert out. Ever-living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when they when loving and being loved. We loved our lives together. There are many memories of blessing forever. Months or years may have passed and we still feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them Though the bitter grief softened, a duller pain abides. For the place where once they stood is empty now. The links of life are broken. But the links of love and longing cannot break. We see them now with the eye of memory, their faults forgiven, and their virtues grown larger. So does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. Their memory is a blessing forever and ever. And remember as well the members who but yesterday were a part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith. For now the task is ours. We give you thanks that they now live and reign with you. As a great cloud of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings and offer hymns of praise and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Indeed, we are thankful for those saints who've gone before us. Their memories linger long in our hearts. But we're reminded of the verse which you have allowed us to know. Let not our hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Help us to have the calm assurance that though they've gone on before us, are now sitting with the angelic hosts singing holy, holy, holy. And for those of us who remained here on this side, Allow us to continue to hold their memories and what they've meant to us and may each of these find comfort in your own way. Now again, we want to thank you for these who died and gone before us. For it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing our opening hymn, the church's one foundation, verses one, two, four, and five.
what a blessing it is to have all these kids come up. So I'm in. This is awesome. Well, good morning, guys. How are you guys? Everybody doing good this morning? Great. I have a question. What is this in my hand? A camera. A mirror. So I'm going to do this. Can everybody see themselves? Okay, so when you look in this mirror, uh, what are you seeing? You see yourself, a reflection. Has anybody ever been told that they look like their dad? Raise your hand if you've been told that you look like your dad. What about, has anybody ever been told that you look like your mom? Raise your hand if you've been told you look like your mom. Me too. I've been told that I look like my mom and my dad, and I've also been told that I look like my grandma. Has anybody ever been told they look like their grandma? Yeah, okay. Well, cool. I'm not alone. So, um, my grandmother is no longer here with us. She died about three years ago. Has anybody ever had a loved one that has passed on? Your grandparents, or? My, grand, my grand, grandma and she was my grand, she passed away. She did. Has anybody else have somebody that has passed away? Would you like to share? My great grandpa. Great grandpa? Uh, 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 um, um, okay, my great grandma. Would you like to share? Um, my grandmother. Grandmother, so we all have people in our lives that pass on because that's what um, happens in life is we're born as babies and then um, sometimes we get to we get the privilege and the blessing to live a full life and then we um, pass. But that's one thing that will happen to every one of us is we will pass. But guess what? It doesn't have to be a scary thing, and that's the amazing thing because God came and God. Um, wants us to live a life that is worthy of him or glorifying him and going on to heaven to be with our father so sometimes when I look in the mirror I see my grandmother and it makes me sad um, a little bit when I think about my grandma because I wish that she was still here and I wish that um, she would get to see she never got to meet Connor but she got to meet Layla so that's a blessing and so sometimes I wish that um, she would still be here but the good thing is um, that I know that uh, I feel that she's with God, and so she's at peace. And so in a story that I'm going to tell you about today, um, Jesus had a friend named Lazarus. Um, Lazarus died, and his sisters went to Jesus. They were very sad, and so was Jesus. Then Jesus did this amazing thing, and he told Lazarus to come out of a tomb. And Lazarus did come out, and the family had their brother back. He was raised from the dead. Now, sometimes I'm sad that this does not happen to the ones that I love. I would like to see them, not in just the mirror when I look at myself and I can see my grandmother um, in myself, but I'd like to um, have her here sometimes. Um, so sometimes that story will make me sad, but other times the story makes me hopeful. Jesus wants us to know that one day we will be with those that we love and we miss. And Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, not to show his power, but also to show us God's love and power can overcome all of our fears and sadness, um, and that we can feel that God is right with us. So can we pray and just say thank you, um, God, for our, your promises, and that, um, that, God, you can be in our hearts, and you promise us eternal life if we choose to follow you. So can we pray? <clears throat> Daddy and Connor and and uh, Grandma Betty and no Poppy and. And so, God, we just thank you for this day and thank you for each one of these kids that are here, God. And we thank you for um, all of the loved ones that we've got to um, spend time with, God, that have passed on and to be with you, God. So, Lord, just help us to um, be grateful and thankful for this day um, as we remember the people that are now um, in heaven with you. In Jesus' name, amen. And I wanted to say a quick reminder, Children's Church, the first meeting is tomorrow at 5.30. So please come if you want to help with 2019, um, having a Children's Church that's going to come right after Children's Moments. The kids will go downstairs um, 
and have their own church service. So if you want to help in any way, please come out tomorrow. All right, thanks. Let's stand as we join together in song singing, Oh Lord.
the fields, the mountains form, the desert hills and plains, what a God you are, what a God you are. Allow us to hear the reading of our passage of scripture coming to us from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 40. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right and hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and you gave you clothing? When did we 
ever see you sick or in prison and visited you. And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you have done it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are doing it to me. And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you've done it unto me. The word of God for the people of God. God. Who are the saints? Who are the saints? We're celebrating today and in our affirmations of faith, we are gathered and remind ourselves of the communion of saints. It is in the communion of saints, I say today, are those balcony peoples who have gone before us. And often that's what we think of sainthood in of itself, those who've gone before. But rather, this passage of scripture gives us a clearer understanding that saints are not something that goes before, but sainthood begins even now as we speak. So the question I asked then, who are the saints? I think the saints first and foremost are those who see. Every time I read this parable of the last judgment, I'm struck by the adverb, when. Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you thirsty? Or when did we see you naked? But those who see and those who fail to see the needs around them ask the same question, when? And each of these had done in their own like kind, but what was the difference between that concept of what they saw, one by which their hearts are being pure and just responded out of what nature they understood, and that is God's love. I think Mother Teresa said these words. She said, I I never look at the masses as my responsibility. I I look at the individual. I can only love one person at a time. I can feel only one person at a time. So you begin with one. If I didn't pick up that one person, I wouldn't have picked up 42,000. My whole work is only a drop in the ocean, but if I did not put the drop in the ocean, the ocean would be one drop less. Saints are those who are able to see. And not only are they able to see, saints are the ones when they see a need, they begin just to fulfill it. Oh, I know at times the the actions may not be a solution to the health care crisis in America, but this I do know, a state, a saint takes the opportunity to provide transportation to those who cannot provide it for themselves. A saint is an individual, though, finds someone sick, sits beside their beds, holding their hands or offering a prayer. Though we may not have the solution, we are therefore a part of the crew the the cure then again I'm also that we may not have the cure for cancer either but what wonderful ways in which our lives we can have by being saints of the day and sitting beside the bed holding their hands offering words of prayers of encouragement sending food to the families who find themselves hurting and lost just being there We may not be able to solve the drug problems in the world we live in, especially in this county, but there's one thing that I know a saint can do. They can take that troubled teen and begin to walk alongside them, provide a role model in some ways. Saints are those who have eyes to see and ears to hear and respond in like kind. Secondly, saints are those who love. I like the, 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 the definition I've seen this last week of love. Love does. Love does. Simple. It's an action verb. It is therefore a stranger and you took me in. I was in prison. You came to see me. And the reason of our existence is to be the sunshine of God's love. In late November, November morning like it is today, in a Lutheran church in, in White Lake, North Dakota... There appeared a man on the front steps, unshaven, tiger clothes, hair unkept, clutching a bottle. Just before worship, as the people came in, some of them sidestepped, others stepped over, and many paid no attention to this gentleman there. There was, however, one kind lady who took the opportunity through a styrofoam cup, gave him a cup of coffee, but not one of them took the opportunity to invite him to church. Now imagine to your surprise when the opening hymn began, the gentleman who sat out front did what? He came into the congregation, took off his hat, his coat, his glove, set the bottle down, and to their amazement, it was none other than their pastor. 
And he offered these words. He says, I don't do this to embarrass you or to poke you in the eye. I did it to remind us that this is one person that Jesus loves and he has called us to love him too. Saints are those persons who realize that all people are children of God and persons of worth and we love all people as we've been loved. C.S. Lewis on the other level helps us understand the words in this way. To love at all is to be vulnerable. To love anything and your hearts will be truly wrung and the possibilities may be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping your heart intact, give it to no one, not even an animal. Wrap it up it carefully and surround it with hobbies and luxuries and avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or the coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, aimless, it will change. It will, will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, irredeemable, and hard, open-hearted people know how to love and to be loved. I, I think love is a four-letter word. L-O-V-E. Love is not an emotion, my brothers and sisters. Love is an action and response. You love because you first were loved. And if you experience the saving grace of our Father, knowing that your sins have been given, you understand love. And who would not want to give that love to another? Water, clothing, visits, kindness. And that leads me then to that of saints are those who share the light. Saints are those who share the light. It kind of shines within them. It's not of themselves. It just kind of radiates through them. Will Willimon, a bishop in our uh, Methodist Connection, tells the story of, of his friend, Stuart Henry. A little boy had accompanied him to worship to the first, uh, first time to Duke Chapel, which at one time Will Willimon was the uh, dean of a school of seminary there, and he always did the preaching. He said on that morning that, that as this young man, as Stuart Henry took his child there, he walked up and down the aisles. He was just amazed, the little boy was, with all the stained glass windows. And the father just asked the sons, do you know who these saints are? Sure said the son. The saints are the people where the sun shines through them. Pretty good definition, isn't it? Saints are the ones who allow the sun to, to shine through I got to share for, for a moment of Mr. Mr. Gary. I hadn't been here very long, and I uh, had a Frisbee accident, remember? Tore my Achilles tendon. Wasn't even here on the job. Hadn't even preached my first sermon. It was there, on, it came to my attention that someone wanted a graveside funeral. And uh, Mr. Gary said, called me, and he said, clearly, if you don't feel like it, don't do it. And I said, no, it's part of my calling, I'll do it. He said, it's just at the graveside. And I said, okay. He said, and by the way, by the way, I want to come by and pick you up. Now, all of a sudden, I'm sitting in my house, and I'm coming out on crutches, and here comes the hearse. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. With his cane and my crutches, we got into the car. And we made it to the cemetery. And no more I had finished, and he seen that I was in pain because I'd sobered up from the pain medication. Thought it would be wise not to preach while drunk on, co uh, you know. He said, preacher, let's get you home. I said, well, I need, he said, no, preacher, let's get you home. And he took me home. It was in instances such as that I seen, I seen the sainthood. The light shone through him. He took care of me. And through my being able to take care of those around me, a light shine, shone brightly. Or I can think of Miss Edna McSpedden. Hot dog. Her last name and I just don't get along, so I always called her Miss Edna. There was not one of us who have not been touched by the sainthood of this, this marvelous woman with a smile upon her face, always. And always one which had the opportunity, she always lifted you up, said something kind or gracious. Always. Sometimes I'm not too sure she wasn't flirting, but nonetheless. 
It's amazing what these lights do. And I think of Miss Anna. And uh, as I sit down with um, the family, and though she wasn't well, I mean, it was difficult for her to get up and down. But the visit that I had with she and Howard was always one, which Howard, she always asked me when I was there that day, how is your family doing? I'm glad to have your children with us. And then, 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 then I asked her how she was doing. She said, I'm doing just fine. When I know deep down she wasn't doing just fine. I knew the pain she was experiencing because Howard had told me. And then when I looked at Miss Lola, though she found herself often in a nursing home, and when I'd go visit her, she probably didn't recognize me. But somehow or another, as I heard the stories of her and her life, I knew deep down that she still loved the Lord, and unfortunately, life was coming to an end. And yet even there, even there, she knew God was with her. I think you can think of those persons in your own lives who this image of God's light shining through them is something powerful. Not just those who've gone on before, but we think for the moment of the sainthoods of those shining through us. If you didn't see the love of Christ shining through these saint of children, you've missed it. You missed it. Now, I don't know about on Wednesday evening when there's 22 of them here and each of them have their own mind and run around like chicken with the heads cut off. I don't know if that's sainthood or Satanhood sometimes. <laughs> but it's just amazing to see that number of children and they're here because of the light you showed through them and invite them to make them feel welcomed and a part of it. That's because of you. You are a saint. Can you say that word with me? I am a saint. I am a saint. And the husbands quit looking at your wife. Wife quit looking at your husband. Are you sure? <laughs> a saint is not someone who's gone before, but a saint is an individual that the love of Christ flows through. A sainthood is someone who themselves sees the needs and fills it. A saint is someone who takes the time to be someone who cares and seeks to serve rather than be served who seeks to give rather than to receive. Are those ones in the background who seem as though it gets done, but no one knows who? I think of two saints sitting here. Have you ever wondered how come the candles are already filled every Sunday morning? Who does that? Chuck. Who? Dick. Dick and Chuck. Are they not saints among us? Yes. Man, I just embarrassed both of them and they're going to kick me out of them. But little subtlety such as these make the church and the world a better place. That's what sainthood is all about. And that's when the love of God moves in our lives and people are able to see. See, I think saints in themselves are luminous and their lives are luminous. They show a pathway through authentic faith. They show the love of God for themselves and for others. And they often, as I say, go unnoticed. The Gospel of John says, he, that concerning to that of John the Baptist, he was not the light. He only came to witness as to the light. But the true light gives a light to every person. And when the love of Christ moves through us. So the question is then, how do we become saints? And how do we allow that to throw through? And I think I want to give you three suggestions this morning. To be a light and illuminate the world around us, the first thing you need to do is be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. James chapter 3, 8 says, A restless evil concerning the tongue is full of deadly poison. Be careful what you say. I guess the, probably the biggest thing we have is gossip. Even if it is true, if you talk about it, it's still gossip. Because my mama said a long time ago, if you can't say something good, don't say it at all, right? Mama probably had it right. And we in our Southern tradition like to say these words. We can say a whole plethora of things wrong with people, but it just as long as we say, bless their hearts, <laughs> it's okay. No, it's not. Be careful what you say. 
Learn to build one another up, encourage one another, offer praise and thanksgiving for the lives. If you look hard enough, you can find something good in everyone in some way, form, or fashion. Some of you got to look a little harder, but that's okay. I think the next thing we have to in the world we live in, use social media wisely. Be careful what you post. Be careful the images that you're portraying out there. Be careful how you respond to different situations. Social media is not a platform, I think, to rant, to rave, or make fun of somebody else. Don't do it. Don't be caught up into it. Social media in itself could be a good thing, and it is. But it can be something horrible. I think lastly that a way we can let light shine is just to think of other people before we think of ourselves. Keeps us humble. I'm so reminded of Jesus Christ himself on the night in which he was betrayed, knowing what's taking place. They all argue among the table who is the greatest and which one was going to sit the right hand and the left hand. And so everybody forgot about the simple task that somebody was supposed to wash the feet before they sat at the table. That's how I know they're worried about feet but not hands. My mom always told me to wash my hands, not my feet, but nonetheless. And so what Jesus do in an act of nothing more than servitude, got up from the table, took off his outer garment, wrapped it around his waist, took that of a basin in water, and knelt down and he washed his disciples' feet. He himself therefore gave us a living example of what it means to think of others before you think of yourselves. Oh, and while I'm saying that, he gave us the ultimate meaning of what sacrificial love is all about. The world made fun of him, spat upon him, mocked him, put him to trial. But even then, he himself took upon him the sins of the world and they nailed him to the cross. Even there, they mocked and made fun of him. He is the living saint that was among us. And there upon the cross in anguish, and he cried out, why had God forsaken him? And he gave up his spirit. O oh, death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is none other found in sin. But on the third day, God would not allow his son to, to remain dead. But he rose from the dead and became a victor over the dark domain. He's showing to us hatred, evil, cannot win. Did you get that? And you and I who are vessels of that very presence, God looked down from above and he said, now I'm not going to let you be by yourself. I'm going to help you become sainthoods and saints. I'm going to let you understand what love is. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you and my spirit will be your guide and your lead. And that spirit moves among us in subtle ways, but sometimes in grand ways. Sometimes it's subtle ways just speaking to our hearts to make that phone call, to write that letter. Subtleness by which we think of nothing but made a tremendous impact upon those when we responded along the way. I say to you again, I thank God for every one of you sitting here. You are living saints as you allow the presence of God to move through you. You are a saint. Hebrews 12 said these words, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin so that, e that in easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You see, one of these years, our names are going to be listed in this bulletin as one of those who've passed on. How do you want to be remembered? And God's people said, we're thankful there always that you love us and have shown us what it means to love our neighbors. We do earnestly pray that we have sinned against you. Sometimes we've not heard, we've not responded, and to that we seek your forgiveness. We know therefore we are redeemed people because you have given us the opportunity to be your living witnesses. Help us to see the needs, fulfill them. Help us to let your light shine through us so that others may come to the knowledge that you are Lord and Savior of the entire world. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing.
In 555, the first and last verses of Forward Through the Ages. Forward through the I'd also remiss that today being that of Veteran Day is today as well. For the men and women who have fought that we have the right to worship freely, that we have the ability to lift up our saints. From the bottom of my heart, for those of you who are, have served, I give you great praise and say thank you. For those of you who have served, would you just raise your hand? And remember those men and women today who are in harm's way, providing us the security. Now as we go, always remember this. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the peace of his Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. And God's people said, amen. amen.